All right, hey guys, I wanted to make uh, another couple of Vietnam kit uh, example videos here. Um, starting today, I'm going to be doing a bit of a medic kit, Corman if you prefer. This is based loosely on 199th Infantry. Um, I say loosely. It's, it's pretty close, but I am not a reenactor. I don't claim to be. This is just an impression for Airsoft. Halloween costume, I don't know. Um, you know, before you go reenacting, you really have to check with, like, the local group you're doing and see what their guidelines are. Uh, I'm going to link in the description a website that I use for reference, uh, and they have some good photos of this kit. They also have a full packing list for the M5 bag. This, by the way, is the M5 medic bag, uh, if you couldn't tell from the big medic symbol and the fact that I'm doing a medic video. Sadly, previous owner cut um, the dividers out of my bag, so I'm also going to link a video by... Outdoor videos with Brad. I think the name of the YouTube channel. He in one of his videos he just opens it, but you can see the dividers inside. So if you're curious about what the inside of one of these bags looks like, he covers that in his video. Uh, the only thing I'll point out here is that these are the straps for tying in your M3 bag. Uh, again, it's a feature I don't have right now, but um, I'm not going to use this as a real first aid kit since it doesn't have any of its dividers. The closest I would do is just put a modern first aid kit inside of this, but for me it's going to just be like my field pack, my day pack. Moving down, we got webbing here. Uh, I'm showing this off in a pistol configuration. Some, maybe all, maybe most, maybe a very minimal amount, but at least some medics were given the choice between carrying a 1911 or a M16. Were there other options? Potentially. Grease guns were still being used in the early war. Actually, grease guns kept being used by vehicles, up crews up until uh, Desert Storm, I think. So. That's always an option. And, of course, the Air Force guys had the uh, GAO-5, which is just the um, XM-177, basically. Again, I'm not 100% accurate on uh, on whether medics would have either of those options, but you could see if dude's flying around the back of a helicopter, maybe he would be uh, issued or maybe he'd be borrowing, you know, get his hands on a cooler gun because, you know, guys are still guys. Dudes are dudes. Try to get hands on a cool gun to show off. I mean, hell, there was a pilot who uh, was gifted a freaking... China Lake once, so anything is possible. But yeah, so web kit here has the um, pistol mags and the pistol. Uh, I don't have the canteens in the pouches because it flies lies flat easier without them, but there's my canteen pouches. That's the, uh, what is it, Carlisle pouch, the World War II style first aid pouch. This is just a reproduction. You don't have to have it. Um, I just like it to fill up the space on the belt. I prefer hanging my pistol off the bottom of the belt rather than sliding the pistol holster onto the belt. I just think this is easier to get on and off and use the same holster for multiple kits. And I just have that to sort of fill in space. For Airsoft, I sometimes put a speed loader or a spare pistol mag or whatever I need in there. Some games that I've, some games that you play might actually have uh, like a bandage that you have to actually tie on people, in which case that would go in there. And I use my other bandage pouch um, for my kill rag. Um, finishing up the belt here. I've got the butt pack and the uh, the poncho. Obviously, the poncho liner is on the table right now, but the poncho is here. Butt pack is actually correct for medics. Not all. There were varying kits. I'll sort of get into that as I, as I go. But for the guys I'm doing, butt pack is correct. As a medic, for a rule of thumb, you're um, probably not carrying the full lightweight rucksack frame or other carry frame. You're focusing on the bag, your medic bag. Uh, Extra water, which is important, uh, especially if guys have uh, been shot or blown up or they just already drank their water. You know, your your canteens are for you. you got to stay alive in the field. This is for guys that you're helping out and recovering. Um, so you're carrying that already. You're carrying this. Butt pack really just fills it out. So butt pack, totally good. And, of course, for airsoft, it's, it's your choice if you want a butt pack or not. Speaking of butt packs and lightweight rucksacks frame, don't think that you have to have this combo. There are photos of medics and on there's at least going to be one on the site that I link that shows a guy with a lightweight rucksack frame and the M3 medic bag, which is the one that goes inside here, tied off to the frame. And then he's got like the canteen and other things tied onto the frame, attached to the frame. So don't think that you have to have this combo to be a medic, but this is a good starting point. Do a better show off of this bag once I throw all this gear on and do a little spin around for you guys. Uh, I want to make a quick note on helmets. You'll see I have two. That one over there is my correct... Uh, 1977, all original. It is post-war, but you'd be surprised how much money you save 
going from like 1971 to 1977, you save like 50% off immediately. So that stuff's original. So that's not the stuff I doodle on. This is all repro. And I show this off uh, basically for one reason. One, it's my doodle helmet. So I have my little cross on the back. Thought about doing it in red, but uh, I figured probably easier access to a, a black Sharpie or marker or whatever. Got my uh, my name on the front so people know who to yell at. And uh, this is a World War II repro. And I'm showing this uh, um, specifically because there were World War II reissue. I'm about to get a cat jump on the table. So just if that happens, don't be surprised. There was some World War II reissue of helmets in Vietnam. And I've seen quite a number, there he is, quite a number of photos of guys still with like the uh, the chin strap on there. It seems that a lot of helmets and liners were reissued more to medics. This is just my speculation based off of photos. Um, and I believe that's because, because all the ones I've seen all have like painted markings on. So they're all, I don't have any again except for the plus on the back. But they're all big like white circle, red cross. There's a photo of a guy who has five on. So he has one on each side and one on top. Um, there's a few photos of just painted liners and they throw the steel pot on before they go into combat. There's a few guys with no helmet cover painted right on the steel pot. And there's a few guys with painted helmet covers. Um, so there seems to be a good amount of World War II reissue. I'm only mentioning this just because if maybe you're starting out or maybe this is what you have and you still want to be a medic if you get one of these then you can use that as an excuse it may not be a hundred percent correct it may only be like 50 or 40 percent correct but you can use an excuse if you have a repro again for me i'm gonna be running my original helmet anyways unless like i'm hung over and just don't want to watch weight on my head i think that's it for items on the table oh i'm gonna show off a few of these here quickly i just have a couple of potential helmet band items let's try not get too much glare on there so basic stuff sunburn cream uh basic first aid uh lip chap insect you know bug juice you know comfort items and i have a couple packs of this um so sodium chloride bicarbonate which is uh you mix this into water and drink this if you've suffered burns and helps you recover faster uh, I have a few more items. For instance, I have like another larger bandage tied onto here, and this tape is like um, it's like the outside on both sides, so it's sticky side to sticky side. So this thing just slides out easily, but it's tight enough to keep it on there for running around. So I think that's it for a table. Let me throw some of this shit on, and we'll uh, we'll talk more about the medic bag and sort of the way everything fits. So, all right, guys, here it all is together. Um, currently got my rifle, but of course, like I said, uh, this loadout is just as acceptable with just a sidearm. So put the rifle away for now. And we'll talk a little bit about the kit. So obviously, I've got my, my personal first aid right here. Like I pointed out earlier, I've got the extra one down there if I need it. I've got my two canteens. I got the medic bag on, and just out of frame here, I got the two quart. Leave a little empty section of the belt, so if I uh, lose weight, I can tighten it back up. Or, of course, you know, nice little place for the two quart to to uh, nestle in there. Now, when guys were, at least in the photos I've found, it seems fairly standard for the guys who are using just a sidearm to carry the M5 medic bag as shown as a backpack. You can imagine really easy to run in and out of a fight like this. If you need your sidearm, it's right here. I uh, don't have any mags, but you can imagine. Very quick, very easy, you know. You're just sprinting around trying to stay, you know, not seen. And for the most part, aside from the different looking backpack, you look a lot like a regular infantryman, which is a good idea for not getting shot. Oh, I've also added some of my helmet items on there. Uh, some of my helmet items. Uh, like I said in the other part, this piece can just slide out if I need it. Not that I would at Airsoft. Um, so this is the basic kit on. Now, there are two ways to carry your M5 medic bag. Uh, guys, Like I said, guys with the pistol will carry it as a backpack. But it actually comes with, on the back here, a bunch of different uh, hooks. Uh, well, customizable mounting points. So you have your, uh, your D-rings here. 
uh, one on each side at the bottom. You obviously have your backpack straps, but also you'd normally tighten these up if you're not using them, but I've left them extended so it's easier to, to do this. You also have shoulder straps. Of course, if you're going to use these, you'd also tighten these up out of the way. Now the guys who would carry M16s would also would would normally use the shoulder straps. So you tighten them and loosen them till they fit right. And now you're carrying it under your shoulder. So this makes it a lot easier to sling your weapon because of course your back is now fairly open. So you see guys who are carrying an M16 often slinging their medic bag under their arm because it makes it easier to uh, well, one, shoulder, less things up on your shoulder, it's easier to shoulder, but also gives you a nice clear back. So it's much easier to throw your M16. I probably should have shouldered it on the, put it on the other shoulder and barrel down. You can see I haven't practiced with this kit a lot, but you get what I'm saying. This is much more easier to access, actually. Um, what you may not have seen earlier is that I have three pockets here, one on each side. And one on the bottom, which I believe is the one that, like, the splint kit went in. Um, each of these, I'm not 100% sure, uh, each of these pockets actually has a, an un like, a behind pocket. So you can stick your hand, like, in here. Uh, same with these two additional pockets. So you can see in the shoulder bag config, I've got immediate access to four pockets plus the main compartment, uh, which, again... Nothing in mind right now. Link in the description to a video that actually shows off some of the internal items. Uh, but that's about it. If you're going for the medic look, um, really easy way. Obviously, if I was carrying this as a shoulder bag, I wouldn't have uh, a random bandage taped to the backpack straps. But really great, great way to, to carry this if you need to. You can sort of put it more behind you if you got to go through a tight squeeze. Bring it out to your side, out in front when you're working with a patient. It's right here. It's not going anywhere. Uh, and, of course, you can uh, tighten and loosen these straps enough that you can get the, the clasp wherever you need it. So you can really quickly, if you have a rifle slung or the two-quart on top of this, you can really easily just take this apart and, uh, and drop it. So that's about it. Um, actually, I shouldn't be doing an, intro, an outro here because there's one more segment, and I will cut to that right now. All right, guys, just round out the video, finish it off here. Um, because I don't have a full M5 medic kit, I still wanted to show you guys an example of a medic bag. This is uh, an Israeli first aid kit. I'm not confident in saying that it's specifically US aid, although it is post-World War II. I picked this up at a military show a few years back for like 25 bucks, and it's like chock full of original items. So just want to show this as a bit of an example of some of the items that you'd find around the 70s. So uh, some of this stuff is distinctly not American. Uh, well, at least not in th that part of the label, but the rest of it is, and that's uh, October 1970. Some of the other items are very American. We have uh, some more bandages. I believe these ones are self-adhesive, but I can't read that. My brother could, and I should have asked him before I filmed this. These are just more unlabeled, like bandages. Got the um, the little book in here. Of course, very much um, not really going to be useful to American troops. But again, it's not an American first aid kit. And lastly, we have uh, this little cast-making kit. So there's, I think, six or seven of these, and uh, they got, like, I think, plaster mixed in. And then, of course, you got the wire here, so you could cut the wire, make a cast out of it, or make a form out of this, and then wrap it up. I don't know how to make a cast in the field, but that's, that's the kit for it. So, again, not necessarily Vietnam items. Let me get the back in focus here. But just something I wanted to add, because I want to show it off, and really, I'm not going to have any other time to talk about this, except for when I'm talking about um, Vietnam era for seed stuff. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, hope it was informative. Again, this is more for an impression or airsoft, not reenacting. Um, I say that purely because if you are reenacting, you should always go with the guides provided by your group because people are particular. Sometimes they're years or units or whatever. But a medic is fairly 
like ambiguous as far as units and years go. Um, you can sort of just blend in. So for me, it's a fantastic starter kit, especially since these bags, although hard to find, are similar priced for me, actually. I got this cheaper than I would have been able to pack and frame I've looked at. So that's that. Um, and again, links in the description to uh, more info on the medic kit, um, the inside, what, it, what you'd pack in it. And uh, yeah, hope to do more of these videos. All right, thanks guys. Cut the video, no more video. We're done here. Real quick, using scratch audio, because someone will say it, this is just a, t uh, a gym shirt, my regular green shirts in the wash, I played Airsoft.